Good afternoon. Hello. 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 It's a nice brigade. Are we here? Yeah. So there are twenty. Hello, my name is Hania. Uh, there are twenty-four of us now, and the more people will come. So let's use this, you know, first two minutes to check our microphones and say hi to random people whom you just meet here. <laughs> hi. Or, yeah. Or Hello. hi. To recognize Hello. maybe <clears throat> you already found somebody whom you know here. We have quite a few countries here. Yeah, nice, nice hair, Kingsley. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Bruno. I'm really happy to see here also our participants of the Game Changer Camp, which was a meeting in October. But as I can see now, majority of us are here for the first time. Game changer. Yep. Okay. I also would like to warn you, this meeting is on record. As you can see, the red dot in the corner. You should be polite. That's a always <laughs> okay i try game changer try. rule number one always be polite <laughs> and always feel on record yeah okay i think we will wait for one minute more to admit all in the waiting room and yeah uh, is this uh, meeting going to be shared with uh, with us uh, as a link or something the presentation yes and the whole recording also, yes, if you can Perfect. Speak, you, know, you can speak something to remember your face afterwards on the recording. Now. Thank you. And okay. 31. 31 people is a good number to start. So welcome, everyone. Again, uh, my name is Hania Nowicka. From Game Changer team, there are also here uh, Francesco Perconti, uh, manager of the project. Francesco, where are you? Hello. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, there is Aaron Mitzak, uh, communication manager of the project. Aaron, please show your face. Sure. Hello, everybody. Hello. You see a dog on my screen. That That is my dog. So yeah. nice to meet so, everybody and have everybody here. <laughs> These three people, like including me, are the people who were behind the emails which you were uh, getting there and back to all of us. But the uh, star and the guide uh, of today's meeting is actually Marta Langiewicz. Hello. Nice to meet you, everyone. Yeah. So Hello, this is this is our uh, the author, the designer of out of the box game and out of the box materials, which will be shared with you in the end of this training, and with out of the box training, which we shall start now. Uh, before giving the voice to Marta, I will just tell you that uh, hmm, you can expect uh, two days or uh, sorry, two hours of work today. Uh, we will start with presentation of Marta uh, because there are so many of us. Uh, we suggest that maybe, you know, chapter by chapter, there will be um, space to ask questions. So it, um, if you have questions, just write them down on, uh, on your piece of paper and please wait for the chapter uh, finished. But of course, if there are questions like something is totally not understood in this slide and you need immediate answer, then please put your question to the chat. And I'm the person whose eyes should be on the chat all the time. And if I can see that uh, something is happening 
there I will knock to Marta, stop her speech, <laughs> her to, um, to, to, to answer the question immediately. Otherwise, we will, Marta will make like step by step in her speech. Um, the other thing, okay, so after the, I, um, we suggest that after the presentation, there will be like three minutes break to just take a breath or, you know, find another cup of tea or coffee. And then there will be questions and answers session. Uh, and in the end, uh, I will get the voice again and Francesco and Aaron, and we will tell you a little bit more about the Google Drive, which will be um, with folder full of materials for this game to you about our uh, working flow. So uh, how to establish working group for all of you that you can communicate, not only with us, uh, with some uh, with Game Changer team, but also within each other. Um, yeah, and all of it should take two hours till until five, maybe five five. Okay, so here, please mute your microphones if it's uh, if you haven't done it yet. And I'm giving voice to Marta. Okay, so again, everyone, uh, welcome to our out of the box training. It is my pleasure to lead you through the game today. Uh, the game was designed mostly by me, but also uh, with two co-designers, uh, one of them being Marcin Rzeczkowski and the other one being Aleksander Tukaj. So, uh, for today's training, our agenda. So first, we're going to learn about what is out of the box. Then uh, we'll get to uh, learn out of the box rules. Then we'll talk a little bit about out-of-the-box gameplay, then about some technical preparation, about the debriefing part, which is probably the most important part of the, the whole experience. And then I will show you a list of handouts and materials you're going to get and tell you what you need to prepare yourselves. In case you get lost, in the presentation or after the presentation, you have any questions, uh, please refer to the design document we sent to you uh, because it should answer all your questions. So as a wise man once said, polarization affects families and groups of friends. It's a paralyzing situation, a civil war of opinion. There has been uh, done uh, huge research on polarization and it was determined that it's one of the biggest steps on the way to radicalization. And that's why I decided to focus on this topic. So we can show our participants, the kids, the younglings, the teenagers and the young adults, uh, what polarization is, let them experience it and then draw conclusions for themselves about its impact on societies. So our first chapter, what is out of the box? In this chapter, uh, we will uh, learn what kind of game it is, who can play it, what is the game setting, and also what the game goals are. Out of the box is an online negotiation board game. It can be played with 12 to 36 players, but 24 is the optimal number of players, uh, assuring the smooth game flow. Uh, it is designed for the players age 12 and up, uh, given your players are tech savvy enough to be able to uh, use Discord, mm, Discord online communicator. Uh, one gameplay uh, should take up to three hours uh, with uh, both briefing and debriefing included. Of course, uh, the game length might uh, vary depending on your participants, the number of participants and on how active your participants are, especially in the debriefing part. Out of the box is played with one game master, although uh, there can be 
to uh, people who run the game. So uh, you, the facilitators, are going to become game masters. And uh, the additional one uh, might divide with the uh, game master. Uh, they might divide what they're going to do in the game. And I'm going to uh, talk about later on. And there are four teams of players, and uh, this amount of teams never changes uh, regardless of the number of players that actually play the game. Uh, the game is played using free online tools. So the Discord communicator, that as you know, you can download uh, for free, and the uh, Google Docs documents. So it's uh, free to access. So just to show you uh, what the game looks like. We have a game board with different rooms on it. And this is your main tool, main visual tool for leading the game. So what this game is really about, and this is a secret. Uh, please notice that uh, I put the shh uh, icon on the slide, and whenever it appears, it means you shouldn't share this content, content with your participants, with your players, because the real game goal is actually hidden from them. So, first of all, uh, we want our participants to realize that we, are, we all are susceptible to polarization mechanisms, and we all function in the world of unequal privilege. The second point is working in teams to achieve teams' goals. So teamwork, uh, putting in, in easier words. And then the third one is finding the most utilitarian solution, seeing all teams as one team, trying to achieve the same goal. Our primary and the most uh, important goal, the main lesson that our players, participants get, is noticing privilege in real life situation. So we want them to build awareness of uh, privileged and non-privileged groups in real life. Uh, as they will experience uh, privilege in the game, they will come to an understanding of an inequalities that stem from the privilege being present in our everyday life. The secondary goals, uh, which are basically mm, skills that our players develop during the game, uh, are to teach players to see the bigger picture, uh, to teach players to think in a more utilitarian way. Uh, utilitarian meaning for the greater good, not only focusing on their own good, but on everyone's well-being. Uh, Improving players' discussion and negotiation skills. Uh, experience advantages and disadvantages of democratic system. Experiencing the power of privilege and sensitizing them to the needs of different ethnic groups. Uh, we want to make sure that the participants understand reasons why polarization occurred during their gameplay and teach them to uh, think out of the box in the, again, more utilitarian way that will prevent radicalization in real life situations. More straightforward, uh, these are the goals we want to achieve uh, through having participants to immerse in the mood of uh, rivalry. So, we want them to focus on achieving their own team's goals. Uh, we want them to experience polarization and uh, the privilege, the power of privilege in a relatable but safe setting so they don't get hurt emotionally. Encourage them to care about more than their own team's benefits. And of course, have fun because learning through fun is proven to be more effective than just studying from books. So what is the narrative and game setting? And that is what you will tell your players about the game. 
So there are four groups of students from a local school that are asked to choose from um, the options that are given to them, provided to them in the game. Six facilities for a new cultural center that is being erected in the neighborhood. And uh, this game is uh, actually really easy to adapt. So if you uh, want to play this game with uh, older students, university students, for example, you can uh, tell that it's on their university campus. If uh, they are all kids from one town, you say in your town, we just m want to make sure that the setting is uh, as close to the players as it can only be. We want it to be well known and easy to understand for the players. So what are our players groups? Uh, the players groups are based on a very uh, stereotypical groups and understanding of the groups. Uh, and I want to uh, assure you that it by no means is meant to discriminate anyone uh, or to enforce these stereotypes. Uh, it's only made uh, easy to understand the goals and the needs for the groups, for the players who actually join one of the groups. So uh, the gifted students are uh, traditionally understood good students. The school marks average is the highest, which gives them a mechanical advantage in the game. They are one of the privileged groups. They privilege the biggest and the strongest. Uh, another group uh, is artist group. Uh, their grades are average and they don't provide them with any advantage. Esports players, another privileged group, um, though the privilege is uh, is weaker than gifted students' privilege, is a team who wants to become professional esports players. The uh, marks average is second highest, which might give them privilege. Uh, it is quite unlikely to happen, but it's possible. And the fourth group is sports players, a team of sportsmen and sportswomen. Uh, and stereotypically, oh God. Typically, the uh, grades are uh, not the highest. We just assume they are not good students. Of course, again, make sure to tell your players that it might not be true and that you don't think that sports players never get good marks from maths or anything like that. It's just to make it easy for your players to understand. So the axis of polarization that is designed for the game that is uh, highly probable, probable to happen during the gameplay uh, is the conflict uh, between gifted students and artists being together versus esports players and sports players. So uh, both on the top, we have privileged teams, gifted students and esports players. And on the bottom, uh, we have non-privileged teams, artists and sports players. Uh, the game is designed the way, so this polarization happens. But again, it really depends on your players. It doesn't mean it will happen for sure. Uh, so we arrived at chapter two. Have you got any questions? Nothing is clear. <laughs> Nothing is clear. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing, comma, it's clear. It's clear. <laughs> oh, okay, that's better. <laughs> actually, actually, if I may, if I may ask, the sure. Uh, uh, maybe I misunderstood, but uh, when you were talking about the the context of the community center uh, and the the personas, what do, what do you feel is the room that we have, for example? Uh, to uh, either identify personas or identify an example that would somehow make it more relevant to the people we would be working with. Have you tried different uh, either personas or uh, or the or scenarios? Uh, all right. So you're talking about choosing different uh, four groups. Uh, for yeah. For the... example, uh, mm -hmm. I gave the example that in uh, at least. 
because uh, I, I work with teenagers, mm -hmm. and at least in Portugal, the, the sports players isn't exactly a, an archetype that would be relevant, uh, and it would be harder for them to identify with that archetype. And so uh, what do you feel about using different archetypes, uh, uh, and have you tried it, uh, or have you heard of it, uh, uh, alternative applications for of this uh, of these four types? Uh... Right, so uh, it shouldn't be a problem unless uh -huh. you change the game materials because the players okay. are going to get players leaf leafless, I'm going to show you later on. And okay. they have every room described to them. Uh, there is some fluff text or flavor text and also point values that describe the room for them, the room's worth for them. And uh, it is possible to change. It is designed for these four groups, though. Uh -huh. Okay, okay, okay. All right, so uh, I guess that's it for the questions. Let's uh, carry on. So chapter two, out of the box rules. So what the board looks like, how to use it with Discord, and how does voting work? The board game uh, resembles an architectural design of a three-story building. So just for your information, there is ground floor, the first floor, floor and the second floor. Uh, on each floor, as you could see, there are two empty spaces, the one marked with a question mark, so six in total, which uh, purpose player, uh, players will have to agree on during their gameplay. Each floor is surrounded by uh, the pictures of six choices uh, the players have for each floor. So as you can see on the second floor, we can see six uh, little squares and these are rooms they can choose from on the second floor. Uh, they are different for the first floor and different for the ground floor. Each team, so gifted students, uh, esports players, artists and sports players, uh, gets a PDF file that contains uh, the room, uh, their team's room rankings uh, for each room that can be chosen in the game. They are divided into uh, different floors and each room's description contains a picture, a color coding, a number, one meaning completely useless and six being uh, of extreme value uh, to them, and the short written uh, description, the flavor text, let's call it. Uh, so let me show you an example, uh, slightly bigger than this one, for, mm, okay, my PDF reader worked, uh, for one of the teams. So uh, as I mentioned, we, got, uh, we have four leaflets. So this one is for the team artists. And there are rooms divided into three floors and um, put in descending order. So for example, the artist's team gets, uh, uh, in the ground floor for the music room, they have six points, right? And we've got uh, the green color coding here. And the description says, it's very, it's very enthusiastic, right? And it says, okay, so you really need to get this one. We basically point our players to focus on what they want and kind of trick them into not thinking about uh, compromising their personal the team's goals. Uh, so uh, five points rooms are also green. And then we uh, scroll down and we see a gym that's where four points, chemistry lab four points, server room three points, and swimming pools, three points. Uh, artist uh, group is probably the easiest one to negotiate with other teams because they don't really have very low values for most of the rooms, but it's uh, not a rule for all the teams. So then we move on to the first floor and basically it works the same way. And finally we have the second floor. Ah. 
founded. Robotic Lab, they hate it. They only got one point, right? We start with no, just no, right? So let the other teams play with their Lego techniques wherever they like, but not in our cultural center, come on. Uh, so these are the uh, players' books, the leaflets you're going to send to your players. Uh, sorry, okay. Okay, so back on track. Uh, teams room rankings uh, are created from uh, the game matrix. So you're going to get access to the matrix and you can uh, change it uh, if you want. I'm going to talk a mo more about it later on and I wouldn't advise you on changing it because uh, we put a lot of effort in uh, balancing it the way it actually causes the players uh, to become polarized. And also it ensures that um, one, of the, one of a few thousand solutions that is higher, high, the highest scoring one is the utilitarian solution. But if you feel brave and if you like uh, optimi optimization uh, questions or puzzles, feel free to modify it. Okay. Another important part to talk about are committees. So there are three committees, one, on, one for each floor, that decide on rooms that are going to fill in the empty space on the board. Every member of each team takes part in all meetings of one and the same committee throughout the game. So here is an example. As you can see, uh, given we, we only have 12 players, one player of each team is in one committee on each floor. Uh, if we happen to have uh, more players, uh, it's not a problem really, because uh, we can just let them decide which committee they want to participate in. So in this example, we have two player, two esports players and two sports players versus one gifted student and one artist in the ground floor committee. On the first floor committee, we've got two artists and one of uh, each of other teams, and on the second floor, just one each uh, of each team. Uh, if you know your participants, if you know your players, uh, you can decide how to assign them to the committees. You can tweak this rule for your convenience, because, uh, for example, if you end up having um, very strong personalities, in uh, your groups, it might be better to put them in the same committee for the different teams. So they actually fight with each other and don't uh, you know, shout at other players who are more timid and they don't dominate the discussion in other committees. Voting mechanics. Voting happens twice during the gameplay. Only one person from each team in a committee can vote. So if we have two artists in one committee, they need to decide which one of them is going to vote. They only have one vote as a team. All votes are open, known to the rest of the committee members. So people from the ground floor committee know how the other teams voted, but other committees don't know the votes of different committees. Each team has to cast two votes in each committee. So since we have two empty spaces on the board, they need to vote on two rooms they want to have. You as the game facilitator and game master are the one who initiates the vote in each committee and displays the results for the player's use. Uh, so, my advice is to display the results like this. So 
you just open a graphic editor. Uh, for me, as I work with Windows 10, uh, it would be uh, Paint 3D. So I'm going to uh, show you how to do this. Huh. Okay, got it. Uh, so we just copy the floor we want to display uh, voices at. Uh, the uh, floor maps, the floor plans you're going to get uh, in the materials from us, uh, as well as the tokens. So if there was only one vote uh, for well, sorry. Oh, come on. Okay, oh, sorry for that. Okay. Uh, so if there was only one vote cast for um, the gym, for example, we put number one token on the gym. If there were two votes cast for Mm, let's say swimming pools, we put number two, and so on, so on, you also will get number three token standing for three votes cast for something, let's say chemistry lab, and finally four votes. Let's say the server room, and then you just save the file Oh, sorry, it's in Polish, so it might not be very useful to you. Uh, save the file and post it on the Discord text channel. Okay, we arrive at the privileged mechanics. So when there is no agreement in a committee on the room to be chosen, the votes are two to two, the privileged groups of gifted students and esports players in that order choose from the rooms that receive the equal amount, uh, amount of votes. So we had three votes uh, cast for the internet uh, TV studio. So three, it's more than two, right? This, um, this room wins. Then we have uh, two votes for the server room and two votes for the swimming pools. So gifted students, as there is only one draw, can decide which of those two rooms they want to have in the facility. So let's say they decided uh, on having the server room, which is based on the player's leaflet and the game matrix. And finally, there was one vote cast from the music room. Of course, it's not going to be chosen because it's, enough, it's not enough. Uh, okay, in case there uh, is a draw uh, with two, 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 and two votes, and it happens, but it does happen rarely, then first gifted students choose one room, and then the esports players choose another one. So this is uh, the only case when esports players can use their privilege. Game moderation. During the gameplay, you as a facilitator and game master are responsible for keeping track of the length of the meetings, both in teams and in the committees. You are the one who informs players about the beginning and ending of each phase of the game. Make sure you give your players clear instructions and you are the one who initiates voting and gathers the results. So they do not exchange the voting results between themselves. You are the one who posts all the parts of the board with the votes on them uh, for them to see. So just to give you an example. Now we are starting the first meeting phase. After I finish speaking, please go to your team's Discord room and discuss your leaflet and strategies. This meeting will last up to 10 minutes. Please let me know if you finish early. 
feel free to take notes at any point of the game. Let's start the first meeting phase. Go to your team's Discord channels now. Or, for example, the time for the discussion is up. I'm here to take your votes. Please call your team's name when you want to vote for something. Or please type on Discord on the count of three. So make sure to give your players very clear instructions. The rules uh, list for the players. So what your players should know before starting the game. This is what you tell them in the briefing part of the game. There are four teams working in three committees on three floors. Each player knows the value of all rooms to their team. Players can't share the number of values of the rooms with other teams. Each committee decides on two rooms on the floor. All committee members from one team have one vote. Votes are open. GM, Game Master, is the one who initiates voting. The game finishes after the third committee meeting after the final vote, but make sure to tell them that there is still the briefing part waiting for them so they don't go away. Uh, gifted students and esports players are the privileged teams and can decide in case of a draw. And you can give them examples what this privilege looks like in practice. And here is the, the game flowchart you, you can share with your players, you can show to your players so they don't get lost. So they can see clearly that they start with the briefing phase, then we have team meeting one, floor committees meeting one, team meetings two, and so on, with polling vote and final vote after the floor committees meeting three. I'm going to talk about it. And finally, the briefing phase. And there is a little note uh, encouraging the players, the participants, to take notes during uh, the game, during the meetings. From my experience, that I, they are not so eager to do that, but still it should be quite useful. So at least try to push them a little so they take some notes to figure out what the game matrix looks like. Marta? Yes? A question on the chat? And I think sure. it's worth to uh, answer now. Could, uh, Tina and Robbie uh, from Association Loitra, Drusztwo Loitra, are asking, could we use the breakout rooms on Zoom instead of Discord? Yes, you could. Uh, that's right. But from my experience, using Discord is easier than uh, using Zoom for that reason for that purpose. Uh, I will show you how this code works later on. Uh, so probably you'll be able to uh, see the advantages of Discord over Zoom for yourselves. Thank you. The game goal for the players, and this is extremely important. Make sure you create the best cultural center. Please make sure you don't say gain the greatest number of points. Uh, having uh, this kind of an open-ish goal, uh, we avoid players feeling uh, cheated. You know, like, hey, we were supposed to get the most points and we did. So why do you make us feel bad about playing according to the rules? What do you mean we could find better solution? I mean, our team won. So what the heck, everyone? Uh, so that's why our goal is make sure you create the best cultural center. There is nothing about getting the greatest amount of points in here. And this is only up to their interpretation, which is probably going to be, let's win this, let's have the most points. But you as the game master, as the game facilitator, are completely free. You know, you're like, okay, I didn't do anything. I'm not guilty. Look, that was the goal that I showed you, right? Nothing else. You were supposed to create the best cultural facility. I didn't say, strive for the win, right? All right, so we arrived at the third chapter. Are there any questions? Uh, 
Uh, hi. Go for it. Uh, I am Kingsley, and uh, I would like to know if uh, later on we can have a kind of a simulation of a of a voting phase because uh, it can be tricky to to understand without playing it. Sure, no problem. Thank no you. problem. We'll do that. Sure. Great. All right. There is another question from uh -huh. uh, Nuno. Uh, would you like to come out and uh, and ask it on yourself, or should I read it loud? I can speak if you want. Up okay. You. So each uh, the question is: Each floor committee meeting will be to decide the two rooms of the cultural center. So at the end of the first meeting, two rooms are already decided. Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, in this chapter what happens in different committee rooms, or in different meetings, in different phases. Uh, so you'll see it's not quite as simple as that. So uh, just please show little patience. And if you still have this question after chapter three, please let me know. I will try to answer it the best I can. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there is another one. Sure. From Dmitro, uh, why there is no voting session on the first committee meeting? There are only two of them. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a great question. Uh, so there is no voting session during the first committee meeting because uh, it basically uh, is not necessary from our uh, test playthroughs. It looks like it changes uh, a lot during uh, the gameplay. So when the players first arrive at the first committee meeting, they can uh, only you know, share some information and they can f agree on something, but they don't get to see the full picture yet. So that's why we decided to remove it because uh, it doesn't influence the gameplay as much. And we wanted to leave more time for the debriefing phase, which is the most important in my opinion and experience. In the end, it makes our life simpler. Okay, got it. No other questions I can see. All right, so chapter three. What is the gameplay? What are the parts of the gameplay? What is the order of things happening? And how long does each part last? So the whole gameplay, the whole experience consists of three main parts. The briefing phase, so preparing your players for the game, playing the game, the actual gameplay, and the briefing phase where the magic happens. So first we'll focus on briefing phase. Uh, here is a briefing checklist for you to make your lives easier. So please make sure your, uh, all your players are ready for the game. Make sure your players know how to join and use your Discord server. Explain how switching voice channels and text channels work. I'm going to tell you about it a little, a little later on. Paste and pin the game uh, flowchart and game board to the general Discord chart. Explain the game goal, the rules, and the game flow to the players. Ask the players to prepare something to take notes with during the game. So uh, you're going to be uh, the one who divides your who divides teams, right? So allow players to divide themselves into four teams or of a similar number of members or divide them yourselves. So if you have friends who know each other and they want to play together, just let them play together. There is no point in dividing them and making them feel miserable and playing with some no names for them. They are probably only, um, they are probably only going to get angry at you for that. So let them divide themselves or you can divide them if you feel it's, uh, and it's a better option. So if the number of player, uh, players is uh, easily dividable by four, there is no problem. If there are, let's say 14 players, then divide them into four, four, three, three, and so on. Uh, 
assign a separate text and voice channels for each team. So first, uh, channels names uh, should be team one, team two, team three, team four, and same both text channels and voice channels. Ask your players to mute text channels uh, of other teams. Uh, this is an optional step. Uh, it shouldn't happen, but sometimes uh, it might happen in Discord that your players see the message newsfeed from the from other text channels in the Discord server. So uh, make sure they don't cheat and they can't see what other teams are writing, uh, teams or committees are writing in the uh, Discord channels. Uh, and engage your players into the team building activity. This is an optional feature of the game. Uh, so if you have 24 players who know each other very well, you don't really need to do that because they already are close to each other. Uh, but if they don't, uh, it's a good start for them and it uh, will serve the purpose of uh, practicing voting uh, mechanics as well. Uh, then after the team building activity, randomly name the, uh, the teams gifted students, esports players, artists and sports players. Rename the voice and text channels on, uh, of each group accordingly to the team's names they were labeled with. So we change team one, team two, team three, team four channels into gifted students, esports players, and so on. As I mentioned, if your players don't know each other, uh, it's best to run a short team building game in the teams. So uh, my suggestion is to play uh, one truth and one line game. So uh, the players divide into four teams. Uh, they go to the voice channels and text channels dedicated to them. And each player presents one truth and one lie about themselves. So for example, uh, A, I used to live in Japan and B, I love driving uh, sports cars. And then when I write my statement, when I say my statements, other players from my team vote in the text channel. Which one do they think is a true one? So for me, the truth is that I used to live in Japan. I don't have a driving license. You got it? Amazing. Great job. And we do this for each, or they do this for each player of their own team. Of course, you can change the game or you can extend it to two truths and one lie and so on. It only depends on you and your time restraints. There is a question so, about the Yes, was the people. question. Mm -hmm. I think we already sure. talked about this before. So Manuel is asking, from your test sessions, what do you feel, Marta, are the main differences between the players dividing into teams themselves versus you doing the division. So what would you recommend? Uh, mm. Actually, uh, and let me complement the question. It's, uh, uh, it's, it's twofold. So on the one hand, how do you feel this impacts the team dynamics? And on the other hand, how do you feel that impacts the result of, of the game? Uh, the fact that they choose their teams versus uh, uh, the game facilitator dividing the teams uh, into what he feels are balanced teams or something like that? From my experience, um, the mixed method works the best, but I uh, always played with the players who partially known each other. So uh, some of them have met before. They might not be friends, but they at least have seen each other so they were dividing themselves most mostly but uh some of them were just quiet and i was like okay so we've got one more space in team one who wants to be team one okay so that's yes okay yes go uh the next method is probably the best it shouldn't take too much time if you've got players who don't know each other at all probably the dynamics is going to to be, you know, they are going to be what, more quiet and more shy, the quieter and more shy, but that's all right. That's what the 
you know, one truth, one lie game is for, so they actually open up to themselves a little bit. Okay, thanks. Playing the game, the meat of our project. So the main Careful, game feature are is Sorry. Yeah, I'm vegetarian too. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so uh, you have already seen this uh, flowchart as I showed it to you as something you should show your players to. Uh, but this time we're going to talk about it in more detail. So we start with the briefing phase and then we move on to team meeting one. So what happens in the team meeting one? Players meet in their teams for the first time. They use assigned team voice channels on Discord for that. Uh, this is the point where you should give each group access to proper leaflet, to proper PDF file that contains the goals for their group. Each player of each team decides which floor committee they want to join. The team discusses the uh, needs and expectations. So they browse through the leaflet and they learn, okay, so we don't want a swimming pool, but we would love to have a chemistry lab. Uh, and that is probably the point uh, where they realize that if they don't act smart, the gifted students group is going to have more power than other groups. Uh, this phase uh, should take from five to 10 minutes. It shouldn't be too long. Then we move on to floor committees, committees meeting one. So what happens here? Uh, gifted students, esports players, artists and sports players, the delegates, meet in the floor committees uh, for the ground floor, the first floor and the second floor. Uh, they use assigned committee voice channels on Discord for that purpose. They get to know other teams' needs and expectations and try to negotiate primary agreements. So they try to figure out with their own means by talking what the game matrix is. They don't really know that there is anything like game matrix yet, but they try to get the picture of the whole game setting. At this point, they should take notes uh, because it would make much easier for them to share information with the, within the groups, within, within their teams. This phase should take uh, from 10 to 15 minutes. Then there is team meeting too. So they uh, meet in their own teams, the gifted students, esports players, and so on, for the second time. Uh, they use their assigned voice channels on Discord. They discuss what they found out during the previous committee's meetings. They should talk about the first uh, alliances they made and discuss potential trade-offs on different flaws. So for example, um, we'll support you um, with your swimming pool on the ground floor if you support us with the art room on the third floor. Uh, there is a good chance that the alliances of gifted students and artists versus esports players and sports players will start forming at this point. Uh, it is a good moment to place number tokens on the board if they want to do it, but uh, this is probably not too useful. Uh, gifted students will probably try to figure out how to achieve exactly one draw on each floor which gives them possibility to use their privilege. So they are, they are in power to choose the room that suits them the best. Other teams on the other hand should think about how to prevent it from happening. Floor committees meeting too, from 10 to 20 minutes. Gifted students, esports players, and so on, delegates meet in the same, okay, same committees uh, on the floors for the second time. They try to push their agendas, create strong alliances, fight the opposition, and suggest trade-offs they discussed in team meetings too. The meeting finishes with a polling vote. Make sure uh, to update the game board and display results uh, on the general text channel in Discord. So 
you initiate the polling vote. They type their answers on the count of three on the uh, floor committees, meetings, channels, text channels. And you put the tokens on the game board as I showed you before. You put them, save the picture and put them in Discord chat for them to see. Then, then we move to team meeting three. This phase is shorter, it's up to 10 minutes. So uh, the players meet in their teams for the last time. They use assigned teams voice channels on Discord for that purpose, and they discuss poll votes results. They decide on the final actions they are going to take in the last committee meetings. Um, it is... Uh, it is a good moment for them uh, to think about betraying other teams. At this point, the polarization should be uh, very apparent, but if they want to push further, if they want to gain, gain some points for themselves, this is the moment they will be discussing it. And then the last floor committee's meeting. They meet in the floor committee's for the last time. Each player has a chance to make a short speech, up to one and a half minutes. You know, something like, please, everyone, this quiet and up room is the most important facility for us. How are we supposed to do anything if we don't have a place to rest? Do you feel my heart beating? Can you hear it? That's because I'm so tired. Please support us on this quiet room. Or they can try to clash with other opponent with their opponents, but it should be very, very short. Uh, players, team representatives cast their, cast their final votes. Make sure that you, as the game master, type up all the votes and present the results to all players before you move to the debriefing part and ask the teams to sum up their points and prepare a bar graph with them. So for the last uh, voting, excuse me, wait a second, for the uh, last voting, okay, excuse me, the file is loading. Mm, I prepared a, a Google Sheets table for you. So I'm coming in the middle and tell sure. you Marta is actually going to share some of materials which will be available for you in Google Drive and you will get the link to this afterwards. Uh, so after the final voting, uh, you should show the results in the form of a bar graph. So here, as you can see, are floors, the rooms so that were possible to choose for each floor and you should type the number of votes each room got. So for example, uh, there was one vote for the gym after the, during the final vote, uh, one for the internet TV studio, three for chemistry lab, and so on. Uh, if any group used uh, the privilege, if gifted students group used the privilege, uh, so, for example, we have swimming pools, two votes, and music room, two votes. You ask the gifted students group to decide on what they want. You just should put the value 2.5. So you can see I did it on the second floor. And in the tab final voting chart, you can see the results you can present to your players. So it's easy to tell that on the first floor, chemistry lab one, and the music room is going to go through. Craft room and the internet radio studio. And here we can see two teams use their privileged. We've got a robotic lab and sport psychologist. As for the end game scores, as I said, you should ask the teams to sum the points. So in the uh, tab end game scores, you should uh, put one one for being present, uh, for the room that was chosen. 
And this is the part of the sheet that uh, actually calculates the points for each team. You can see that with chemistry lab being one, the scores for gifted students are 24. Let's uh, change the chemistry lab to internet TV station. The results change. The total points of all teams is here. And I also made two charts for you. So this chart displays uh, game results for each team. So we can see the artist teams are the clear winners here. The lowest scoring team is esports players with 16 points, the highest artist with 25. And you can uh, also use a bar that shows the sum of the points as well, right? So we can see that's 82 in total, and each team is represented by a block of a proper height. I'm not pushing on you using uh, those tools, but I think they are quite useful. They might not be as useful with uh, young learners if uh, they are not get very good at maths, but probably still visual representation uh, would work better. So it's a must, but it's very helpful tool, yes? Yes. From my experience, it is helpful. There is also a question. Do you have sure this now? So Manuel is uh, saying, how often have you seen bluffs happening during the second committee meeting? For example, a group lobbying for room A when in truth, in the final votes, they will want room B. Um, I ran uh, four test games. Uh, and it happened it happened once one uh one floor committee basically completely destroyed other teams on one floor they were going for the perfect uh balance situation when everyone is kind of happy and then they change their mind at the last moment and they uh have managed to win the game <laughs> I guess that All I right. see some happy faces here also for <laughs> <laughs> supporting. Yeah, but I guess that this is also great material for debriefing phase, yeah, with this participant. That's right. So the last phase is the debriefing phase. And again, where the magic happens. And now we're going to uh, talk about the technical preparation. And then we're going to talk about debriefing in uh, detail. So uh, are there any more questions for now? I'll See take it here. as a no. Mm -hmm. yes, okay. Uh, so uh, what is necessary to run the game? What do players need? How do I set up Discord server? So the list of necessary equipment and software is here. Mm, I believe I believe it's a comprehensive list. So of course you need a computer with a stable internet connection since it's a game online. Headphones and a microphone. A timer. You can use your uh, mobile phone timer. It works just fine. Uh, the Discord app, Discord account, Google Chrome, which I strongly advise you on using because Google Docs seem to work the best with Google Chrome. Uh, our Google Sheet for presenting voting results. Again, optional, but I would use it. PDF reader uh, to open players' leaflets. Our Google Sheet game matrix I'm going to talk about later on. And a simple graphic editing tool. Uh, like, for example, for Windows, as I said, I use Paint 3D. Or uh, for Mac, you can use uh, SketchUp app. The preparation checklist. So for Discord, download the app, check. Set up Discord server, check. Serve, uh, share the server link with the participants, 
Not yet, but we'll do it. Create voice and text channels. Not yet, but we'll do it. I'll show you how to do it. And the downloadable materials are of the game board and tokens, rules list, game flow chart, players, leaflets, Google Sheet for bar chart plotting. The necessary equipment and software for players. Again, the computer with a stable internet connection, headphones and microphone, Discord app, Discord account, Google Chrome, PDF reader, because they need to be able to open the leaflet. It, it is possible to open the leaflets in, uh, you know, as a Google document, but uh, at least for my students, it doesn't always work. So it might be better for them to have something like Foxit reader or Adobe Acrobat reader. So we arrived at the technological part, setting up Discord. Uh, there is a question, so I guess, because some, something is blinking. Uh, so I will uh, share my Discord. And Tanya, do you want to share the question? Yeah, I, I can take it. It's me again. <laughs> yes, please, go. Uh, uh, yeah, sorry to always be uh, uh, popping up with the questions oh. here. But, uh, That's great. Uh, I was I was wondering in those uh, test plays that you did, were mm -hmm. there uh, repeating players, and if so, how did it affect the the, the gameplay? Uh, they weren't. Uh, this is a, a one-time game, yeah. because okay. in the like debriefing phase, we tell them what the premise of the game is. If you have somebody who loves playing board games and you want to be the, your secret agent. It's possible to use them, but uh, it's basically one-time experience. OK, OK. It makes sense. Thanks. No problem. Uh, all right. Again, sorry, I need to share something with you. OK. So uh, as you can see, this is my Discord. So uh, how do we uh, create a new server? You just click the plus, add a server, create my own. This one we can skip. Um, we name our server out of the box. We can upload a photo, a picture. Mm, let's upload number one. Why not? And create. So on the left, you can see there are text channels and voice channels. There are only two of them for now, the general text channel and the voice channel. So um, on the text channels, we can type, obviously. Uh, we can also um, paste some pictures. So for example, your players will be able to see the game board here. Uh, if we want you to- see it in paint, yeah? Yes, well, this one is not with the voting markers okay. yet. So it's a, you know, a virgin game board. Mm -hmm. uh, we can pin it here. So it should be uh, easily findable for your players. And that's basically it uh, for the text channel. Mm, for the voice channels. When you click on the voice channel, you join it. Uh, so I'm pretty sure you could hear the ta uh, jingle. That means we joined a voice channel. If you click on it again, you're going to see your uh, own rectangle uh, with you. And if other players are present, there are going to be even more rectangles. Whenever somebody speaks, the window uh, gets this, can you see, grin, uh, green line around. Uh, here you can control your camera settings. I'm not going to uh, turn my camera on now because I'm afraid the Zoom will crash. Uh, you can share your screen uh, for presenting them the uh, bar charts, or you can just you know, print screen them uh, into the text channel. Your microphone settings. And if you want to disconnect, you just click this red button. And now we're not in any Discord channel. There was a sound indicating, uh, the voice channel, there, there was a sound indicating that nobody can uh, hear us anymore. So how to get players uh, on our channel? Invite your friends. 
edit invite link. Uh, why you edit it? Uh, you invite, uh, your invite link expires in one day. You probably uh, want to make it uh, non-expire at all. So you just choose never. And you create a new link. Now you can copy. And you can paste the link in an email or um, any messenger you use, the message application you use with your players. Uh, so I'm going to invite you to the channel after I finish explaining how to use Discord. So for the text channels and uh, voice channels as well, to create a channel, we click on the plus mark. We choose the channel type, so text voice channel. And we name it. So for example, text channel team one, create channel. And the voice channel, team one. So when I join team one channel, only people within the team one channel can hear me. They cannot hear me if they are connected to general channel. And now, only people on general channel can hear me. Nobody who's not connected or who's connected to other voice channel is able to hear me. Uh, to edit channel, we just click the uh, edit icon and we can rename it, for example, gifted students. Uh, the Discord is kind enough to remind us to save our changes. So just save it and escape or the X mark. Now we have gifted students channel. Just let me disconnect. Uh, all right. What about uh, the players we don't trust? So um, I played with uh, players who didn't try to cheat, uh, which was nice. <laughs> Uh, but it might happen that your uh, players will try uh, to cheat. So, oh, that's that's good. I um, that's good. I didn't record the video for you because the Discord has just changed. Uh, so, uh, if you want to add members here, you type the name. Let's say our one of our players is called Jinx. So we type Jinx, it should, he should or she should uh, be visible on the list and we choose them and only they will be able to access the channel. So it will be locked uh, for other players. Uh, but probably if you tell your players, you know, just don't try to sneak peek the other channels, it should be all right. Okay, so uh, by you mean that somebody is going to the channel which is not for him, like he's gifted. That's right. He would like to listen to artists, so artists will just um, remove him or say nicely to get out. Of there. Uh, so it's not the artist because you are the administrator of the server. Uh, if you don't assign other uh, players, your participants as administrator, they won't be able to kick somebody out. But you can decide which uh, participants are going to be able to join which channel. Mm -hmm. And you do it in the channel settings. Uh, if you want to change your user settings, you choose user settings. Uh, you can choose your name. Uh, you need to uh, sorry, you need to type your passwords though, so I'm not going to do it now, just in case. Uh, and you can change your avatar easily. I think I'm going to uh, stay with my Agent Smith avatar. Uh, and that's basically it. You don't really need anything else from Discord. Discord is really simple to use once you spend five to 10 minutes with it. Uh, all right, so uh, I would suggest uh, I would suggest practicing uh, with uh, sorry with Discord uh, the voting mechanics at the end of our presentation. Uh, but if you want to do it now, we can do it now as well. All right, so let's carry on. 
Yeah, let's carry on to the briefing phase, then have five minutes mm -hmm. break, and we will come back with sure. questions. Okay. So, out of the box of the briefing, why is the briefing the magical part? What topics should you talk about? How to engage players into finding the utilitarian solution? So, uh, the briefing phase allows uh, the reflection on and the sharing of game experience. Yes? Sorry, it's just that you are sharing the presentation that we can see uh, your notes also, which means oh. that the, uh -huh. the presentation is just in like halfly seen. Okay. Uh, oh, thanks for telling me. Okay, now it should work. Thank you. Yeah, cool. Works. Thanks. Is it? Yeah, thank you. Uh, all right, uh, so it allows your players to share the experience and to turn it into learning. It gives uh, space to them uh, to share and exchange their feelings, their ideas, and to generalize the learnings from and between all par participants. Uh, that's true, some learning often occurs while a game is uh, being played, but deeper lessons uh, are learned in a good debriefing session. If your players have their cameras turned off during the game, which is probably going to happen since teenagers are not really fond on showing, of showing their faces, uh, probably you should ask them to show their faces. It helps with establishing a human connection between participants and you and uh, returning to their true identities as well. But uh, don't push too hard on cameras being on. Some of the kids are very shy in front of the camera. Some of the kids don't feel like showing their rooms or their apartments. Uh, some kids are just like, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do what you tell me. So okay. encourage them, but don't force them. And you mean by showing your faces, you mean Discord general channel, right? That's right, on Discord general channel. Thank you. So the four stages of debriefing. The first one, hype. The second one, feedback. The third one, inception. And the fourth one, discussion. So let me elaborate on them a little bit. Hype, relieving the best and the most exciting moments of the game with the players and uh, grafting common feeling of mutually beneficial experience on them. You know, keep your energy high and be excited even if your players are not. It is contagious. So, uh, you know, some bored teenagers are like, oh my God, that was so boring. What was the stupid game? We didn't even... We didn't even win, or you might uh, have players trying to break the game on purpose. Sometimes it happens, but that's okay. If you feel excited, or if you're forced to feel excited, your players are going to catch your energy and they're going to share it. So both your players and you hype about the game. Then there is feedback part. That it is time for the participants to share their emotions and opinion about the game and talk about their experience. Encourage all of the participants to speak. Remind them uh, there are no right or wrong ways of experiencing the game and everything they want to share is important. Uh, you know, make sure uh, there is enough space for everyone to talk. Uh, moderate the speakers uh, as some of them tend to be uh, the spotlight stealers and love to talk about their own experiences and love to talk about themselves. Let the shy people shine as well. Uh, probably you should ask them to speak one by one, uh, but only one person at the time with no discussion at this point. So uh, your players might say something like, like hello, I'm Marta. I was playing in the artist team. Uh, that was an interesting but stressful experience to me because I don't like speaking in public. I had fun. You also might get a participant who will say, uh, hello, I'm uh, Maciek and I like pancakes very much. Uh, or I play Fortnite every day. 
Oh, it's fine. Just let it be. Don't get angry. They are just teenagers. <laughs> that happens. Inception. So uh, this is the phase when integrating a wider context for the players happens. It serves the purpose of starting a discussion on social matters. This is the, the moment uh, we tell our players what out of the box is really about. Ask your players questions to lead them to the real realization of what happened in the game and try not to put it bluntly. So, uh, you know, don't try from the beginning being like, so radicalization happened, huh? Do you know what radicalization is? Ah, oh, polarization, oh, you bad students, horrible people. Let's be positive and let's push them delicately into their goal. So I uh, listed some potential topics uh, for you to choose from. Of course, uh, depending on the game, uh, it might you might choose the proper debriefing. It's up to you and up to what you think is proper for the group and for what happened in the game, actually. If for some reason your team arrives in the utilitarian solution, don't be like, Oh damn, what am I going to say during the briefing phase? That's the worst. Be like, look, guys, you are truly amazing. There are a few thousand solutions to this problem and you found the best one. You are great. Look, you did something incredible. But be aware that normally people tend to. <laughs> uh, so, potential questions. Uh, who won the game? That's uh, something you should uh, ask them before you show them uh, the uh, bar charts. Are you all happy with the, the, with the scores you achieved? What was your strategy in the game? Did any alliances form during the game? Did you try to play against other groups rather than for your own group? How do you feel after the game? Do you feel you would happily visit the cultural center that you designed? Did you notice any hate, you know, internet meaning of hate going uh, on in the game? Did you notice the power uh, of invisible privilege of gifted students and uh, esports players? Because, you know, even if the privilege groups didn't actually have to use the privilege, uh, the power of it being a possibility is quite visible in the game. So uh, the students tend to hate, other students tend to hate on um, uh, especially gifted students being like, oh, gifted students, they are so cool. They think they are so cool, but they are just lazy busters. They are teachers, pets, whatever. So it influences the game, even if it's not used in the game, actually. Uh, show them the point distribution graph. Ask them if they think that was the best possible score to achieve. Ask them, what is polarization? Do you think it can lead to radicalization? Do you think radicalization happened in your game? Give an example. Do you think polarization happened in your game? Give an example. Make sure you create the best cultural center was your goal. Do you think you achieved it? Did you try to achieve the goal which was the best for the whole community, not only your team? Point to the human tendency on focusing on their own benefits rather than the whole community's gain. Show players the value of the utilitarian solution either by letting them find it themselves, that's recommended, or by showing them, showing it. Uh, also, this game gives you an opportunity uh, to talk about uh, multicultural communities needs and uh, there are multicultural elements in the game. So the game board and the rooms, uh, room cards contain elements you can discuss with your players. So for example, we've got an ecumenic chapel in there or a separate sex swimming pools for Muslim people. There is no room number four or number 13 as for Asian people or European people. Uh, the banquet rooms are, uh, are filled, the banquet room is filled with traditional instruments. Uh, kitchen uh, has separate stations for preparing kosher, halal, vegan and uh, vegetarian food. Uh, there are separate sex toilets and there is a unisex one. Um, there are bidets in the restrooms for Muslim people. Uh, 
but not only, of course, uh, shoe boxes and uh, the raised vestibule, for example, for people from Asia, like Japanese people. Uh, well, sorry, something happened. Okay, uh, sorry. Uh, there is a hand sanitizer dispenser, which I guess is normal nowadays, but it was designed with, in, with thinking about Asian people who sanitize their hands a lot. But nowadays, everyone needs to do that, right? Uh, so there are quite many elements you can talk about. There is an art gallery with uh, statues from different cultures. So you can just talk about, there is the quiet room. You can talk about uh, countries where siesta is the custom or the tradition. And the last part, discussion. Let your players talk and exchange ideas, but moderate the discussion and try to keep, on, keep them on track. So this is when they actually discuss both their experience and the social context of the whole experience. So now they have the broader picture and they discuss uh, probably pol polarization, radicalization that they can notice in their own environment every day. Welcome to the matrix. So, so as I mentioned, the game matrix is the skeleton of out of the box. And it determines how the team's value, uh, well, how is the team value for each room? Uh, it, design, it is designed in such a way that polarization appears and it allows you to show the players the most and the least utilitarian solutions to the problem. Uh, so I'm going to show you the matrix document. Where are you? Okay, got it, sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, so as you can see, here's the game matrix. Again, you can tweak it if you tweak it if you feel brave. I wouldn't do it for the first game plays. Uh, so here you can type in your in-game solutions. So you can type for each team, points for each room on each floor. And here it sums up to everyone's points total. Ask your players if you have time and if you got a group of players that are analyt analytical thinkers, show them the matrix and ask them to find a better solution for that. And uh, there is a secret because around the row 307, uh, I assume that's far enough for your players not to find it. Probably if they are stubborn, they are going to scro scroll just to the bottom of the possible sheet, but it's far enough. There are two utilitarian solutions. So the first one is here. You can see that everyone's points in total is 91. That's the highest possible number. And team's points are 22, 23, 23, 23. They are almost equal. And the gifted students have one point less than everyone else. Uh, there Job. is also, <laughs> right, there is also the second utilitarian solution is not as good because we have 21 points here and 25 points here, but it is still pretty close. Uh, again, these are two solutions uh, out of a few thousand. <laughs> So you can just experiment. If you want them to find more solutions, just copy, paste this part, let them play with it. Then you can show the utilitarian solution and tell them, look, this is the best option. It's amazing. Everyone would be happy coming to a cultural center or center like this because everyone has the biggest amount of points. That's great. Amazing sum 91. Uh, okay. And do you uh, this is also like the final of the briefing part, right? Yes, this is uh, this is the final of the briefing part. This is one of the options you can do uh, for the inception phase and the discussion phase. Uh, sorry, wait a second. I'm trying to find my uh, trying to find the right window. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. Okay, the screen one and the screen two. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so this is something you can talk about with players who are more into science. Generating bar charts, which uh, which I covered before. Let your players find the best solution. We talked about it during the, the game mat matrix. And here are uh, two utilitarian solutions listed. The one with the quiet room is the best one. The one above is the slightly worse one. There are only six solutions in total that score 91 points. The, the other four are uh, not uh, utilitarian solutions, but it's really hard to get them. The chance they are going to find it is really low. All right, and the last part, the handouts. Have you got any questions before the break? 4.45, I think it's time to go to last chapter. Is the last chapter? It is the last chapter, and it's very short, so Great. don't worry. And questions We're at the finish. Please continue. Okay, so um, the handouts we provide you with. Uh, here's the downloadable, downloadable handouts list. Uh, we provide you with the game board and, and the game tokens graphic set, game flowchart, rules lists for your uh, players, participants, PD, uh, e PDF leaflet for each team uh, with room scoring, uh, copyable uh, Google Sheets with, fi with file for plotting graphs and uh, voting results and uh, for the matrix the webinar recording that we're doing right now, and the uh, tentative game schedule. So, uh, of course- And here, it, here I must come yes. and tell that the, it will be downloadable from Game Changer EU org. But for now, it's uh, we made a special folder for you. And you can use this folder. And here on the chat, I'm pasting you the folder link. But of course, you will get also this by email. So this is the link with out of the box all materials for you. Don't worry, on Monday, you will also get email with saying again, what is the list there and what you need to, uh, to go through. Okay, sorry for interruption. Okay, um, uh, that's it for our presentation. Uh, I remember that you wanted to practice the mechanics of voting, which sounds like a great idea. Uh, have you got any other questions though? Now it's time. Will we get the presentation? Of course you will get the presentation. Actually, it is already in the folder, which I pasted you the link to. All right, uh, so uh, let's take a look at uh, Discord. I'm going to paste uh, the Discord link in the chat. Uh -huh. For some reason, it didn't copy, okay. And in the meantime, you can grab your questions and you know ask them on chat and we'll go back to them or, yeah, come out. Is Discord free? This is question. And unlimited about number of participants and timing. Uh, yes, Discord is free and it is unlimited and the time is not limited as well. There is the paid version of Discord that works better with uh, sharing screen uh, with uh, many players. But uh, the limitation uh, starts around 40 players, then it works. Uh, but it works uh, slightly worse. I don't expect you to uh, get in trouble, to be honest. I don't think you will need the paid version of Discord. Discord being free is one of the reasons why we decided on using it. All right, so uh, we have uh, six participants uh, online on Discord, two more, uh, one more uh, that's offline. Uh -huh. Oh, I'm offline as well. Let me change it. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. You know what we are doing on the chat now. Marta pasted the link like three comments ago. 
on Discord and we can just go there and check how it works. Okay, let me copy again for you. Okay. How can Discord be used and for this game on uh, our phones? Um, I believe it's easier to use it uh, on your computers, especially if you're a game facilitator. Probably for the players, it is possible to use uh, on the phone, but uh, it's much more convenient to use it uh, on the bigger screen and mm -hmm. on the device with more computing power than a phone. Yes, I only ask just for um, some of... Uh some people that may be working with um, maybe some youngsters with uh, or some young people with uh, poor internet connections or whatever the case may be. So I was just mentioning that, making sure before I made a statement that that's always a, a quality backup. So if you know someone has an unstable connection, they can always use their Wi-Fi signal as, uh, yeah, their, their cell phone signal rather. Uh, yeah, I would rather them um, to use the phone as a tethering point. Uh, the Wi-Fi, let's say Wi-Fi source uh, for the computer, then uh, use it just on the phone. But yeah, it is possible to play on your phone. It's not really uh, convenient to do it as a game master. Mm -hmm.